Hey everybody, welcome to Beaming Knots and today we're going to look at the summary of the poem Five Ways to Kill a Man, a poem by Edwin Brock. Setting of the poem. The setting of this poem changes from every stanza to the next. The first stanza is set in Jerusalem where Christ was crucified. The second stanza is set in a medieval English battlefield. The third stanza is set in a gas chamber during World War 1. The fourth stanza is set on the site of atomic bombings during World War 2. The fifth and the final stanza is set in the post World War 2 world, the world contemporaneous to the poet himself. Summary stanza 1. There are many cumbersome ways to kill a man. You can make him carry a plank of wood to the top of a hill and nail him to it. To do this properly, you require a crowd of people wearing sandals, a cock that crows, a cloak to dissect, a sponge, some vinegar, and one man to hammer the nails home. The poem consists of five stanzas. The first, second, and fourth stanzas are again made up of seven lines. The third stanza is made up of six lines. The fifth stanza is made up of four lines. Hence the entire poem consists of 31 lines in total. In this stanza the poet describes the first way of killing a man. He is talking about the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. He says Christ was made to carry a log of wood uphill and then his body was attached to that log itself with the help of nails. A crowd of people watched this brutal killing and they were all wearing sandals that they could throw at Christ. A cock crowed to remind Saint Peter that he had done as Christ had expected. He had denied knowing Christ at all. Christ's cloak was torn off so that he may die naked and never be given a proper burial. When Christ asked for water, he was only given a sponge soaked in vinegar. Finally, the final nail was put in his body and he died on the cross. Summary stanza 2. Or you can take a length of steel, shaped and chased in a traditional way, and attempt to pierce the metal cage he wears. But for this, you need white horses, English trees, men with bows and arrows, at least two flags, a prince, and a castle to hold your banquet in. In this stanza, the poet describes a second way of killing a man. He is talking about the civil wars in England during the Middle Ages. The most notable among them being the Wars of the Roses fought between the houses of York and Lancaster from 1455 to 1485. In these wars the soldiers of opposing armies often fought with swords that were marked with the emblem of the house that they were fighting for. The blacksmiths of the time were so advanced that these swords could easily pierce through the metal armors of the soldiers. They rode on the white horses through the English countryside often using bows and arrows and holding up the flags of their respective houses after a war had been won the winning prince would throw a banquet in his castle as if the ruthless killing of men was something to be celebrated summary stanza 3 dispensing with nobility you may if the wind allows blow gas at him But then you need a mile of mud sliced through with ditches, not to mention black boots, bomb craters, more mud, a plague of rats, a dozen songs, and some round hats made of steel. In this stanza, the poet describes a third way of killing a man. He is talking about warfare by gassing that became popular during World War I. The English army only needed the wind to blow in the right direction to release the contents of many gas cylinders towards the German army. However, as luck would have it, and the wind direction abruptly reversed and the gas came back to the British army itself, killing many good soldiers. The other disastrous conditions of the wartime are also described by the poet. He mentions the underground trenches of the soldiers. the heavy boot on their feet the holes in the ground that have resulted from the dropping of bombs the bubonic plague the songs that were sung to uplift soldiers morale 
and the metal hats on their heads. Summary stands of four. In an age of aeroplanes, you may fly miles above your victim and dispose of him by pressing one small switch. All you then require is a notion to separate you, two systems of governments, a nation's scientists, several factories, a psychopath, and land that no one needs for several years. In this stanza, the poet describes the fourth way of killing a man. He is talking about the atomic bombing of Hiroshima and Nagasaki during World War II. He says that since airplanes had been discovered by that time, American forces flew miles above these Japanese cities and detonated their bombs at the touch of a button. They are able to commit such a heinous crime because the Pacific Ocean separates America and Japan and because their administration supports different sides in a war. American scientists had developed the atomic bomb in their factories after they heard that the Germans were building something similar at the behest of psychopathic Hitler. Hiroshima and Nagasaki were so badly ravaged that no one could actually live there without being affected by radiation. Summary stands of 5 These are, as I began, cumbersome ways to kill a man. Simpler, direct and much more neat is to see that he is living somewhere in the middle of the 20th century and leave him there. In this stanza, the poet describes the fifth and the easiest way to kill a man. He says that he has already described four of the many troublesome ways in which to kill men. But the simpler and the cleaner way would be to let them live in the 1950s. The post-World War II era was filled with problems such as poverty, unemployment, inflation, hunger, and malnutrition. These problems were likely to kill a man naturally, without anyone's active involvement, so the poet feels that this is the best way to kill men. Central Idea There are five ways to kill a man according to the poet. You can crucify him, kill him in armed warfare, gas him, or drop an atomic bomb on him. However, the simpler and neater way to kill a man would be to make sure that he is living in the post-World War II era. That way, the man would die naturally without anyone else's active involvement. The world is in such a bad state that no man can survive these trying times. Conclusion: 5 Ways to Kill a Man is a unique poem. Not too many poems have been written on the subject of ruthless murder. It also manages to evoke a sense of guilt in the readers. They feel sad to be a part of the human race knowing that their fellow men have committed such heinous crimes. The poet's hidden message is that man must change his ways and this message is definitely not lost to the readers.